Welcome back everyone. Today in what I'm reading, I'm going to be talking about a functional reference model of passive systems for tracing network traffic by Thomas Daniels from Iowa State University. Uh, this paper was published in Digital Investigation. It was accepted in uh, December 2003, published in 2004. Uh, so in terms of you know digital forensics and, and digital investigation, this is almost a lifetime ago, really. Uh, lots of things have changed since then. So um, I went into it thinking that it is an, an older paper and we, let's say we've advanced, or well, at least we know a lot more um, since this has been published, but it was still interesting to read it and see uh, what people were talking about in 2004 um, about passive systems tracing and network traffic. Um, this paper uh, was specifically looking at making essentially a reference model. So you'll see that they talk, well, if you read it, you see that they'll talk about a reference model and the overall paper is quite, um, really, in my opinion, quite general. They were trying to generalize their model um, where I didn't particularly care for that generalization. I didn't like the fact that they were trying to make a reference model. Um, uh, I would have preferred, you know, they just describe uh, exactly how they actually applied what they were trying to do, and they do give a formal model um, that describes essentially their, their overall system, um, but I don't really see it as a reference model anyway. Um, so overall, looking at passive, um, basically pass passive network analysis. So. Their whole idea is uh, just like other other monitoring systems. You have these uh, what they call observers in the system, and they're monitoring uh, monitors that passively capture data uh, without modifying the data. Okay, well that's not not so new, right? We have these passive monitors uh, placed throughout the network or throughout different segments of the network um, that are just uh, passively capturing this data without modifying it. Okay. And uh, an obs uh, they describe an observation from these observers as some uh, subset of data uh, with the monitor ID appended. Or uh, So whatever node actually observes some traffic going through it, um, it's sending all of this traffic to either its own storage or a central storage repository, um, and it's tagging that data with its monitor ID. Uh, once it has the monitor ID and then you have all the data in kind of a centralized storage system, then you can know essentially where the data is coming from. Okay. Um, yeah, so it doesn't really say it's in the, the title, but basically what they're essentially trying to do, as far as I understand it, is looking for origins. Uh, from a digital forensics perspective, uh, where is the origin of traffic coming from? Uh, we can't necessarily trust, for example, the IP address or even the MAC address because we could spoof those. Uh, so we're looking for the origins of, of network traffic. Um, so the idea is that you have these sensors all around the network and whenever ta traffic flows from one segment to another, um, then different monitors see it and then you can uh, correlate basically different traffic sent to a centralized analysis system um, based on you know the monitor ID that actually saw the traffic when the traffic was was seen and um, you know what the traffic actually is uh, we have data or observations that are stored and the observations are defined as a subset of all of the data I'm not really sure how uh, they they pull out the subset of data but uh, you have this data and an observation is some subset of the data that you're actually interested in um, remember this is all pre uh, pre-incident. So this is a monitoring system, um, which means you actually control the system. It's, um, you know, for forensics, if we're looking at digital forensic investigators, we would have had to actually know that some event is going on to be able to use this system. Uh, analysis programs do node correlation or relationship building. So they have these uh, kind of sensors around the network that they call monitors or observers. They're making some sort of observations or basically data collection throughout the network. Uh, and then they have these analysis programs that do correlation, correlation or relationship building either within the data, within the monitor ID uh, information that's appended to the data, uh, or just relationship building uh, between the data that's sent between one segment or another. Um, Really, the, I, I think the most interesting thing that I saw in here was, let's see. Uh, 
sufficient uh, sufficient functionality for passive origin identification. They try to uh, they do introduce these five mutually sufficient uh, conditions for passive origin identification, and they are network separation by trusted monitors. Uh, I'll describe these in a second. Network separation by trusted monitors, enough storage per monitor to accommodate the analysis, analysis program to collect and process observations from the monitors, a trusted co uh, communication path between analysis programs and the monitors, and correlation of an input to a given output across every relay. And really, I mean, the first two they kind of describe, the rest of it they don't really describe very well. Um, but basically network separation by trusted monitors, you have uh, essentially different segments of a network. And the idea is that, um, let's say if you have sensors on both sides of a gateway, uh, for example, and one, one sensor thinks that uh, data is coming in through the gateway and going to one of the nodes on its segment, um, but the other sensor did not see that data going past the gateway, then you know that the data must have originated from within uh, within the segment rather than going actually across the gateway. That's kind of the idea. So network separation um, either into segments or, yeah, I mean, placing, <laughs> placing these sensors somewhere where they can actually tell about the flows of the data, but they don't really describe flows. Again, I think it's mostly because the terminology wasn't really defined at the time in 2004. Uh, enough storage per monitor to accommodate the analysis. Um, again, in 2004, we were looking, I mean, if you're trying to collect uh, especially raw packets, um, you would have had to have huge amounts of storage space, which would have been a problem potentially back then, but not so much now. Um, again, they are collecting these observations, and I'm not really sure... Uh, at what level they were collecting these observations, if it's just, you know, all packets or uh, particular, you know, protocols or whatever. Um, but they, obviously, if you have a big network, then collecting raw packets for the entire, uh, the entire network might uh, require a lot of traffic even today. Okay, so enough storage per monitor to accommodate the analysis and analysis program to collect and uh, process observations from the monitors. So once they actually get uh, or collect all of the data going through these different segments. It's mostly dealing with flows here. Um, then some sort of analysis program that can analyze the data uh, quickly enough so you can then remove uh, the raw data, keep the observations or keep the analysis part of it, uh, and then uh, you don't have to worry so much about storage. Uh, a trusted communication path between analysis programs that I didn't really see them talk about much about that, but, uh, you know... Uh, they did kind of allude to the fact that their monitors could be compromised and apparently, I mean, if you're sending data from a monitor to a storage area, then I guess that could be compromised as well. Um, so I think that really refers to the fact that these sensors could be compromised and the storage, um, storage locations could also be compromised. So they just describe a, a trusted communication path, okay? Um, and a correlation of inputs to a given output across every relay. So, um, yeah, they also really didn't describe that too much either. Okay. Uh, network separation allows monitors to determine the origin. Again, whenever uh, data is moving across network segments, um, the sensors are basically correlating that information. Um, and yeah, that's how they're figuring out where things, the actual origin or trying to determine the origin here. Uh, storage, like I said, the storage was an issue in 2004, not so much an issue now, but still could be if you're trying to do raw packet analysis, but then you would probably do it hopefully fast enough, you wouldn't have to store too much. Uh, they do describe forensic implement implications, so forensic implications, there's a section on it. This section is, uh, again, I can't really tell if it's not just not very focused or not very well written, or if it's just the fact that uh, terminology wasn't really um, well established yet, so I think I think it, you know, terminology here is a bit of an issue. Um, so just keep in mind if you read this, then some things don't really seem to make sense, or they seem very vague, and it's probably because they weren't really well defined at the time. Whereas now uh, we have definitions for them. So again, looking, think of this as a kind of a an archive paper or something a little bit older. Um, that still has relevance, but um, some things don't really make a lot of sense. 
Uh, so forensic implications I have here. Uh, current techniques are only useful for investigation. Um, they, that's that's a direct quote. Current techniques are only useful for investigation. And I don't. Ha there's no really explanation what they mean by that. I think it's the fact that it's just passive and. Um, for example, at the time, maybe they couldn't respond to incidents that were going on. Um, I'm not really sure what they mean, and they don't really elaborate on that quote. Um, so I thought that was interesting. They're thinking that passive analysis is only useful for investigation. Well, I, I don't think I would agree with that even at the time, but again, I don't really know the context that they're saying it in. Uh, limited to a single type of traffic. I think here they're talking about how to filter out traffic so you don't use as much space or um, again, I don't really know the context around that, but they're talking about uh, limiting analysis to a single type of traffic. Uh, data reduction removes important information. This is related to the amount of storage space that's available, and they say that data reduction methods uh, basically remove some of the redundancy that makes that, that is potentially interesting for digital forensic investigators. Uh, and um, does not give investigator enough information due to transformation. So apparently there was some sort of abstraction um, in, in the techniques at the time, and that abstraction was reducing the amount of information that was useful for digital investigators a little bit too much. And that basically uh, results in that uh, investigators using methods similar to this method um, could figure out essentially where an event occurred, what the origin actually was, but they, once they actually figured out, you know, the segment that the, uh, that the attack took place on, uh, they wouldn't be able to figure out exactly what machine did it. And I think that, again, the context is a little bit fuzzy, but I think that's pretty much what they're talking about whenever they're talking about these transformations, um, and that it didn't have, give the investigator enough information. So then the investigator would have to, basically uh, go to that segment and then do a manual investigation from that point, as far as I understand it. Uh, this is proposed as a reference model, and because of that, I think they tried to be quite general. Um, it is, you know, they, they do give formal definitions of, of their method. Um, so formal definitions of an observation, formal definition of uh, internal, external monitors, um, where it was... Yeah, this is kind of the state machine model um, of networks and uh, passive network origin identification. So um, really this should have been just called passive network origin identification. I don't think it really should have been a reference model. Um, I think you know the, the formalizations, the model that they actually give um, is interesting. Um, if you're looking at this today, um, you know, I think it doesn't hold up very, very well, but uh, it's still interesting to read it in the in the perspective of 2004. Um, so some of their conclusions I don't really necessarily agree with. I don't think they've done them well enough. Um, yeah. So they did describe several conditions that are sufficient for determining the origin of NDEs uh, or these these um, basically the monitoring systems. So the conditions. I think their biggest contribution probably were these conditions, which is uh, network separation by trusted monitors, uh, enough storage per monitor to accommodate the analysis, the analysis program to collect and process observations. I don't think the, the program to collect and process observations from the monitors is um, you know, a necessary condition to be able to do it. I think as long as you have the data... Um, well, I mean, you would have to analyze it anyway. Yeah. So, uh, a trusted communication path between the uh, between the analysis programs and the monitors, and the correlation of an input to a given output. So, basically, uh, what they're saying is, um, you know, the most interesting, I think, is probably this separation of trusted monitors to actually be able to identify origins, and then everything else is, uh, uh, I won't say extra, but um, not not so interesting. So, you know, overall. Um, Again, considering how uh, how the paper, you know, it's it's 12 years old at this stage, almost 13 years old. Um, it's you know pretty well written. I could understand most of the English in it. Sometimes they were a bit vague, or I think they had too many ideas at the same time, um, which made it a little bit difficult uh, to to understand. So, for example, the implications for forensics. So, sorry. 
where was it yeah the forensic implications they have a lot of different ideas in here and some of them they just kind of throw out the idea but they don't really describe what the implication actually is for forensics. Um, so they say another major forensics problem facing is they focus on single types of transformations or our host base. Okay, so they actually talk about host based uh, transformations quite a bit. Um, but, you know, they, I think a lot of the ideas that they put forward, they don't really back up very, very well. Um, they didn't explain some things very well. And the organization of the paper could be quite a bit better. But again, this was the first issue of Digital Investigations. So um, you can't really hold them to today's standards. I think it's it's overall quite well done. Um, and yeah, still quite formal. So um, yeah, if you're interested in, in what I would call basically just... Pa well, if you're interested in passive monitoring and looking for origins within a network um, uh, network traffic origins uh, then this could be an interesting read for you if you basically yeah so passive origin identification I think that's probably what the paper should have been called uh, passive uh, network traffic origin identification something like that anyway so that's what I'm reading today um, not a bad read uh, a little bit old but um, still interesting so that's it for today thank you very much if you like this video, please subscribe for more.